one of the first major events of the spring and some of the hottest action of the year is going to be around the rainbow and cutthroat trout spawn. As fly fishers, we all want to get out, have a great time, and catch some fish. But we need to be careful and we need to be purposeful about how we fish in the spring, in, around, and immediately after the spawn. In this video, we're going to look at the cues and the clues that are going to tell us the spawn and the bites about to turn on, the types of water that we're going to fish, those that we're going to avoid, which fish are off limits, and where we're going to go and have the best days on the river. Join us. Sustained water temperatures between 44 and 48 degrees Fahrenheit in the spring is going to be what initiates and start the spawning drive up into the rivers. It's going to pull those big rainbows and cutthroats out of the lakes into the feeder streams to start to spawn. Every time I'm on the water, I wade with a River Oracle fly fishing thermometer tucked through the laces of my boot. I'll tuck the bottom of the thermometer down through the toe of my boot and I'll clip the carabiner onto my knot. So every time as I'm waiting, I'm actively taking and tracking the water temperatures. As those water temperatures creep up to 44 to 48 degrees, we're gonna see our rainbow and cutthroat trout utilizing two main habitat types in the river. They are gonna be staging and pulling up and gathering in the deep, slow, well-sheltered pools. And this is gonna happen up and down the river. Then they are gonna make their break up into the shallow ripples we are able to target the fish to the trout in the pools, those fish are fair game. Once they move up into the ripples, this is where they're gonna create their reds and start spawning. So, when we see those fish sitting in a foot or less of water, we're gonna see these cleared patches of gravel and cobble on the bottom of the river. This is an act of red. And we have a number of rainbows working this red, darting in, fanning it, dropping eggs, and then returning to their holding water. Let's see if we can get a view of these trout underwater to better understand the types of waters we would not be fishing during the spring spawn. Those reds that we're looking to avoid are going to be bright patches on the bottom of the river. They have been fanned clear of algae and sand and we need to wade around those. When you step on those, you can crush hundreds or thousands of young trout still in the eggs. So be mindful of the red, mind the red, watch your step, and wade in some deeper water if you can to avoid these. During the spawn and immediately after the spawn, there is no love lost between members of the same species. Rainbow and cutthroat trout will actively sit behind members of their own species feeding on eggs. Likewise, in the fall, brown trout and brook trout will actively cannibalize each other's eggs as well. Oftentimes in the spring though, you will see rainbows and cutthroats on the red and brown and brook trout immediately downstream eating these eggs as fast as possible. It's almost like a game of hungry hippos when you were a kid. You slapping that paddle as fast as you can, picking up those beads as fast as you can, that's what it's like in the river. It is a feeding frenzy and the angler should be a part of that. A traditional egg pattern might oftentimes be taken too quickly or too deep into the trout. Our peg egg pattern on the other hand has several advantages over our traditional egg patterns and that it has a clean hookup into the corner of the mouth every time we fish it. By using a peg egg kit, the angler will have much greater flexibility to adjust to the different conditions on the water and the preferences of the trout that day. Within these peg egg kicks, you will find multiple colors from soft pinks to fluorescent oranges to a very realistic mottled brown, apricot, or blood red. One thing you'll notice from all of these eggs is there is no hook incorporated directly into this bead egg. Instead, we are going to be tying on a naked hook just below our egg pattern. There are two ways to rig a peg egg system. The first is our slide rig. In this setup, our bead is going to sit on our tippet where it can slide back and forth above the hook. To hold it in place then, we will use a toothpick jamming it into the hole of the bead between our tippet and the inside of our bead. When we break off that toothpick, it will lock that bead in place one and three quarters to two inches above our hook. When the fish grabs that bead, that peg will slide out and that hook will roll and clip right up into the side of the mouth of the trout. Our second system is a static rig where our bead will not slide. To set this system, we will take our tippet, we will wrap it through 
and around the bead three times, locking it in place. With our tag end remaining below that bead then, we will add our hook one and three quarters to two inches below the bead. The reason that the peg egg system is so effective and mortality is so much lower is the way the trout take the egg. As trout are sitting in their feeding lane and they see eggs bouncing down the river, they're gonna go out into that current, open their mouths, grab this egg, and in doing so, that hook is gonna be hanging just outside of their mouth. As they turn to return to their feeding lane, that egg will either slide and pop and that hook will run up into the corner of their mouth with a clean hook up on the side of their mouth every single time. No deep hooks, no gut shots, happy, healthy fish. Another killer combo that you're gonna hear a lot about when fishing during the spring or the fall is eggs and bacon. Eggs and bacon is comprised of either a San Juan worm or a squirming worm tied either above or below your peg egg. This combo has caught more fish than I can count and one that you should certainly try when fishing during the spring or fall spawns. As fun as it is to catch trout, and as hard as they sometimes hit our flies, they are actually a fairly sensitive species, and a careless angler can do more harm to a fishery than good. When landing a fish, we always need to wet our hands before handling the fish. They have a protective slime coat on their body that's gonna keep fungus and bacteria from colonizing on them and making them sick. So, we keep our trout in the water. Please, please, please do not hold them up by the line or drag them onto the shore. To remove the hook, you can cup the fish in your hand and you will slightly turn it onto its side or back. The fish should relax, allowing you to return that hook and then place it back in the net. If you want to take a photo, we're going to cradle that fish in the net and when your friend is ready to take that picture or if you're using the time feature on your camera, lift it up, get that shot, and then return that fish to the net. When it's time to release that trout, we're going to hold that trout facing up into the current. And when it's ready to leave, it will do so under its own power. This is important. This is how we ethically catch and release trout so that this fish can get bigger and we can come back to this river and catch it again. I hope that you enjoy fishing during the spawn and ask that you do so responsibly so that we can enjoy coming back to these rivers and having vibrant, healthy fishery, fisheries for years to come. If you like this video, please do subscribe underneath leave us your comments and give us your tips and tactics for how to have a successful ethical time fishing during and after the spring spawn. Please subscribe, follow us on Instagram and tight lines.